The following podcast was produced by Big Head Amusements for KQEK.com. Marco Beltrami has established himself as one of Hollywood's and horror's busiest composers, and perhaps its most agile in adapting orchestral sounds to any genre. In addition to World War Z, Beltrami also discusses scoring the smaller scale zombie film Warm Bodies, his writing partner Buck Sanders, and writing action music in the vein of his mentor, Jerry Goldsmith. Our first topic of discussion is one of his earliest works, the TV series Land's End, which, in tandem with Scream, was for many the first introduction to Beltrami's skills. I've actually been an admirer of your work since uh, Land's End, which goes quite a way back. Wow. That's way back to the beginning. Yeah, because I think I remember even watching a couple episodes of the show, and it was one of those things where you thought it's a neat little show, but you always got a sense that sometimes when something's really original, it may not be something that the networks will sort of recognize. Yeah, that was exactly the case. It was it was a little too original for this mm-hmm. the network, but it was a, a really fun show. It was such a shame that I think I canceled and then just wonder if we could talk primarily about your work in horror and action, uh, perhaps starting with World War Z. Okay. Uh, in terms of the score itself, uh, what was it like working with Mark Forster? Because I understand that, uh, as he said in some prior interviews, each time he approaches a film, whether it's because it's a different kind of a genre, he also tries to go for a different kind of a directorial style. And I wonder if um, he tried something different as well in terms of the, the sound design and the music as well. I started working with him, you know, actually quite a while now because uh, it was about a, a year last October that uh, I got started on it and um, after seeing what he had which was a very different movie from what there is today um, but there are some things that were, were similar I mean the, his his concept was to explore and innovate as much as possible and not really rely on any temp or anything that had you know previously cut in for screening stuff to influence me so as a composer that's ideal because you don't you know you want to be able to explore when i first saw the movie the thing that struck me about it um is opening uh takes place in philadelphia and these zombies take over and um then it cuts to this emergency broadcast system speaking so it seemed like a good place to start out in terms of where to begin musically so anyway, we took some just some tuning forks that have just a real pure tone for them, and it turns out the emergency beacon is a, a major whole step. And we um, took these tuning forks and processed them, and that became the basis for most of the harmonic and melodic language of the movie. I mean, it, it sometimes it exists just as a tonal element in the score, but it, it's a very you know simple melodic harmonic component which comes from this. Did you find that it was a bit uh, unusual for this particular film to get such a large uh, orchestral scope? Because you've written, I think, th- two other uh, zombie scores. One was for Warm Bodies, which is very different, and Resident Evil as well. Well, so the thing was that um, all this was great, fine and dandy, but very experimental, if you will, in a way. The studio had a big budget movie on their hands, and uh, they felt that the music needed to be epic as well. So that became the next challenge, like how to integrate a, um, a big epic scope to this thing. But also while retaining a little bit of the, the gritty character of the, the experimental stuff. So we, when we recorded this score, we actually recorded with two orchestras. One was a big orchestra at Abbey Road in, in London, and the other was a smaller a chamber group playing at, at British Grove. And that's where we replaced all the all the electronic elements of the score as well. And just out of curiosity, for yourself, because you've scored three zombie films, why do you think there's such an interest with them? Because it's a genre that, you know, kind of disappeared in the early 70s, then came back when there was just a few installments, and then now it seems almost every year there's some kind of a zombie film. I don't know. I mean, I guess the public has a fascination with zombies. I think this particular film is very different than, you know, Warm Bodies or any other zombie movies that I've seen before in that the zombies themselves are act almost as if they're a, like a force of nature. You know, it's not like so much individual zombies, uh, although there is that too. 
but it's almost like they move as like a swarm of bees or ants or something like, you know, it's much bigger scope to it. You know, musically that also suggested certain things or, or orchestrationally like how to, how to mimic that stuff too. But you're right, I think there is a continuing trend of fascination with sound. And I think one of the reasons why I liked Warm Bodies as well, which I think you co-composed with Buck Sanders, right? Yeah. Uh, I liked the, uh, the the intimacy of that score, and it also had kind of a, an interesting sense of humor going through it, so it felt more like the music for character drama that just had a bit of an edge to it because of the zombie aspect. Well, I think that's what it was. It, it was I think the zombies were a vehicle to tell the story in Warm Bodies, and the music itself it was fun to play with this idea of dead sounding music that, you know, started out with just like the, you know, when you get to the end of a record, how it just goes around and you hear that, that loopy scratch, you know, that's what the music came out of, almost like a broken record, and began to evolve as the film progressed. Uh, and then I wonder if you can just describe your working relationship with Buck Sanders, because you mentioned that uh, you've actually been together since Land's End, which is quite a while. He was a fan of the show, and we had a mutual acquaintance that, uh, he asked me to come to a scoring session, which was uh, actually Scream, and I, that's where I first met him, and then he asked if I needed an assistant, and um, I didn't know what he would do, but I said, yeah, and he quickly, well, re- relatively quickly found that um, I wasn't that good technologically or electronic elements, and, uh, and he had a real strong interest in that. Over the years, it's evolved that so we work on a lot of things hand-in-hand. I mean, he really guides all the processing of the acoustical elements that we do and uh, you know sometimes we actually write things together as in warm bodies where we work on themes together and I don't know it's just sort of it just sort of fits it's not a common thing for composers like two people to work together uh, but you know I, I really feel like the way he's my right hand and, uh, we seem to have a, a good understanding of, of uh, each other's aesthetics. Now, I think there's a good balance between your contributions, and, and I like the way that also the electronics and the and the orchestral kind of blend so well together. And at the same time, there's also always like a little bit of experimentalism that uh, I think I, I guess you'd be both share in common and interest in, yeah. in infusing yeah. stuff. Yeah. My experimenting was done more in a orchestral level uh, with more of a concert traditional background, and, and his is more from working with computers and so forth. And I wonder if I could just briefly mention the Omen remake, because it's always been one of my favorite scores. I think one of the things that I liked so much about your work in that film is that it evoked a lot of kind of the musical style of the 1970s, and it paid little subtle homages to, to Goldsmith as well. And I wondered when you wrote the score, did you already have an interest in his work? And uh, also, were there any specific things, if you were analyzing his work, that you found very refreshing? Yeah, I mean, I actually, I came out to California to study with Jerry in uh, 1993, and was a big fan of his work. You know, the biggest thing that he taught me over the years was that you know, I had come from a, a world that sort of valued complex ideas and sometimes even hiding behind complexity. His thing was to be as economical as possible in writing, both in terms of uh, you know making things playable for the orchestra so it's as easy as possible for them, and also in terms of the film as a whole, starting with a very simple idea and letting that be provide like the root system that can branch out and provide the framework for the score of the movie and that is what he did brilliantly in his score to the omen that they can actually his whole score can pretty much be traced back to three notes and you know and he got an academy award for that uh his only and for me it was really inspirational when i got that movie to try to approach it in what i think jury would have Proved of, you know, in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that was hopefully similar to the way he approached the first omen. The one I did was, for the most part, uh, shot for shot, similar to the, the original omen, so it gave a real opportunity to try to work along that, that same pathway and 
you know, I uh, I never got to reduce it to, to three notes, but I found him very inspirational. Now, well, I think one of the reasons why I like the score so much is because it also has a really, really strong, beautiful central theme, and that, that is something that Goldsmith was always very good at, and something that also, I guess, was kind of emblematic of the writing in the 1970s, where you had composers that could do all kinds of different styles, but they could also write some really striking themes. Yeah, themes nowadays, it's very hard. Uh, um, there's a real reluctance on the part of, I don't think it's so much the composer's fault as it is the direction that composers are given. Is a real reluctance for music to stick out in thematic ways. I um, almost because it calls attention to itself. It's a it's a trend that I hope will change because it's you know that that was one of the great things about the old scores. For me, I think probably one of your strongest themes, and not one of the most beautiful, is was still Mimic because while it's one of your earliest scores, it's such a strong, robust, emotionally epic score. I guess you could say. I I remember that process and. Guillermo wanting a very strong theme, and I remember playing him something, and he was like, that is, you know, that's a bunch of crap. You have to give me something, uh, a stronger theme. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was, I think, uh, largely due to his encouragement. And I think I also like the way, basically, that the theme in that particular score, it just sort of builds very simply and then gets to something very grandiose and then kind of recedes again. So there's a lot of elegance to it. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, was, uh, I enjoyed that score. Well, if I could just ask one more question regarding Goldsmith, it sort of ties into your work on Die Hard 5, and the reason why um, that comes to mind is because you've always had this really strong grasp of rhythm, and one of the things that I keep finding every time I sort of listen more intently to Goldsmith's scores, especially the ones from the late 60s and early 70s, is what he does with rhythm and how he'll take something very simple and kind of just layer things over it, and he'll just trade it off into different different kinds of instruments and so on, and you end up with something that is just so amazingly sophisticated, and I do get a sense that, that is also there in your work, especially in Die Hard 5, because for myself, that's one of the best action scores written in the last few years. Oh, well, thanks. The thing with, um, that Jerry did really well is uh, he worked with polyrhythm and, mm -hmm. um, and odd meters, and that's something that I've always been a fan of, too. It actually comes from, you know, early... 20th century music, uh, you know, Stravinsky and so forth, and it, it seems to infuse a, you know, an oddness to the character that can, yeah, it can help with giving a sense of depth or complexity to it, so it's something that is fun to, fun to work with, and very, yeah, great at that, and there's a lot of that in Die Hard. Yeah, I mean, even the, the first cue that basically starts the film, it just sort of starts and then builds and builds, but it immediately just grabs your attention and makes it very clear that something very urgent is going on, and that just kind of runs constant throughout the entire score. And um, It's a really, really solid work. Oh, well, thanks. And then actually, my last question is just about uh, some of your early scores in terms of the end songs, because I remember that in some of the films, like Scream and Mimic in particular, you would co-compose a vocal song. I haven't done much of it recently, but I guess I got a little discouraged. But, you know, I used to have a lot of fun. I enjoy songwriting as well. The uh, And, you know, I had a, a few instances where I had the opportunity to work on some song ideas for movies. But, you know, for the most part, it seems lately that, you know, there's a whole music department and music supervision team on the movies and they make deals with different record companies for their artists and all so it becomes hard I think it'd, it'd be it's still a, a, a neat idea to build um, like a song based on the theme of the movie or you know even inspired by and have it all tie in together in practicality it doesn't always turn out so smooth and oftentimes you know we'll get caught up in the film which is constantly changing up until the very last minute and there seems to be less time to work on scores now than um, it was in the past. You get really caught up in the minutia of changing cuts and so forth. So it's, um, in a way, that, that part of the process is uh, it's not as enjoyable. That's a shame because, I mean, I, I really in, I enjoyed the, the little songs that would appear because I often thought that they were kind of like this nice little in-joke and gift towards the people that stayed towards the end of the film as well as those who got the CD because uh, La Cucaracha is hysterical. It has great lyrics. <laughs> Yeah, we had a lot of fun doing that. I, I don't know, one of these days, hopefully I'll have the opportunity to get back to this soon before that. The soundtrack to World War Z is available from Warner Brothers on CD and as a digital album.
For related film and film music reviews, please visit kqek.com. This program is copyright 2013 by Mark R. Hassan.